Welcome back to CIS 105. Today we're going to be working on the PowerPoint Module 1 section of the textbook. It's the somewhat orange colored um, section of the textbook. It's going to begin on PPT 1, creating and editing a presentation with pictures. So to begin, we'll flip on to PPT 2 and we'll see that we have a completed document with what it's going to look like. On PPT3, we'll talk about changing our document theme and adding a variant. So to begin our work, we're going to open PowerPoint. We're going to use an a existing template. So the template we're looking for is the Berlin template. And then we'll choose the green variant. It's the lower left color. And we'll choose Create. Once we do that, we'll say click to add title. We'll do that. We'll notice the text disappears. And we're going to go ahead and change the title to Autumn Family Programs. Now it's important not to hit enter unless the textbook tells you to hit enter at this point you're going to want to click to add a subtitle you'll see that the text disappears and the subtitle we're going to add is tall oaks nature center We're going to zoom our slide in and out to illustrate how the zoom works. And we're going to zoom our slide out till we get to 70%. So we could use the zoom bar till we get to 70%. Now this might be a little small on your screens. This is just to illustrate a point right now. And I'm going to zoom mine back in so it's not too, too small. 100% for me seems to fit well. Okay. we're going to go to PPT 9 we're going to select the text tall oaks nature center so we'll click and drag tall oaks nature center flip on over to PPT 10 where we're going to be asked to italicize the text the same shortcuts that work in Word will also work in PowerPoint we can also use control I on the keyboard we're going to increase our font size. We can use the floating toolbar if the floating toolbar is available, or we can use the actual size options up in the font category. And we're going to change it from 20 point to 36 point. Tall Oaks Nature Center. Okay, so let's go ahead and double click the word autumn in the title. And that's going to select it. We're going to change our color of the word autumn. We're going to use a standard color orange. We'll flip to PPT 12. Now the standard color orange is selected. We're going to use file. We're going to say save as. We're going to find our flash drive or wherever we're saving our document. In this case, I'm saving mine to CAS 105OA in my documents folder. I'm going to save mine to my classwork folder. And my document name is going to be Tall Oaks as my document name. Tall Oaks. We'll click Save. On PPT 13, we're going to click off the text so that we're not having anything really highlighted. So as long as you're not clicking on text, and you don't see these dots appearing, you should be fine. Click off of that. We're going to be on the Home tab right now, and we're going to use the New Slide button. Now there's actually two buttons here, a New Slide, which is just a regular slide, and there's an option for choosing what kind of new slide you want. We want the top New Slide button. This is going to make a new slide directly following the slide that we just created. We're going to click to add a title. And my title is going to be Morning 
bird walks. We're going to click to add text. Now you notice here that we're going to see a preset bulleted list here. And as we click it, we're going to watch the text go from a solid color white to a faded color so that we can't see it. We're going to start typing enjoy and you'll notice as soon as I start typing anything in here my white background is going to show up again. Enjoy a hike on natural surface trails. Once we press enter here PowerPoint is going to continue to create our bullet list just like Word has done. And it's even going to go ahead and continue with our, um, our shaded out background. What I'd like to do is now is we're going to go ahead and increase our list level. So this is our leftmost list level. If we use the button up here that is an increased list level button in the paragraph category, we're going to see that we'll click it one time and we'll increase our list level one place. You can also hit the tab key. The tab key will uh, do the exact same function as actually clicking the increase list level. And then shift tab, which we'll use in a little bit, will go ahead and do the same thing as decrease list level. So we're going to type the text approximate, approximately. one point five miles after that I'm gonna press the enter key we can use the disk decrease list level which is this button right here or I can use shift tab on the keyboard that's gonna do the same thing we're gonna continue typing the text that we see on PPT 17 which is nine space a period M period space every Saturday every Saturday we'll press enter we need to increase our list level so I like to press the tab key I think it's faster than using your mouse bring binoculars and a field guide press enter. We're going to increase our list level again, so we'll press tab another time. Extra supplies will be available. Press enter. Press enter again. You'll notice that we're continuing with our list level here. We, even if we just keep pressing enter, it's going to keep going down. All right. So the way to decrease this list level again would be to go ahead and do a shift tab. But actually, we don't even need to go ahead and press enter. So I could just backspace out of it, go back to the available thing. And that's just an example of what you can do. Where if you don't press a list level, it's not going to, you know, go forward or go backwards. It's going to keep it fully indented, the exact same way we've been doing things before. All right, so on PPT 17, we're going to select the words every Saturday. Every Saturday. On every Saturday, we're going to bold that text. If your floating toolbar is here, you can click on bold. Every Saturday. We're going to increase the words every Saturday. We're going to increase it. one time just to bring it a little bit bigger to make it stand out more on PPT 19 it talks about adding a new slide on PPT 20 we're gonna click off the text so it's not selected anymore I'm gonna use the new slide drop down we're going to see we have some pre-made slides for us, and we're going to use the comparison slide. This is going to create a third slide in our presentation after the second slide.
So we use comparison. The comparison title, click to add title, is going to be afternoon insect identification we're gonna click where it says so I went to slide three we're gonna click where it says click to add title and we're gonna type the text grasshoppers we're gonna press enter and in parentheses we're gonna type also known as locus then we're going to click where it says click to add text again on the right comparison and this one's going to be dragonflies enter in parentheses often mistaken for D-A-M-S-E-L-F-L-I-E-S, -E close parentheses. We don't want to press enter after that. Now we're going to add yet another new slide. So we're going to go to the new slide drop down arrow again. And this time we're going to add a slide that is just a title only slide. Title only. This title, we'll click to add title, is going to be Twilight Firefly Hikes. Okay, and we'll spell Twilight right. Twilight Firefly Hikes. Now we've used the predefined green color theme right now. What we're going to do is we're going to click on the Design tab on the ribbon. We're going to notice that we have all these predefined themes right now. We're going to find the theme we may have to click the more button to see more themes try that again the more theme button here and we're gonna find the theme that is the main event theme we're gonna click the main event theme and we're gonna see that we have some new variants to our main event theme and this time we're gonna apply the green main event theme variant when we click that that's going to automatically apply the green main event theme to all of our slides not just the one okay so let's position the pointer in the scroll bar that'd be over here and we'll click and drag or go to we see slide 404 so if we go ahead and we can just go up and down a little bit here so we can click and drag up three two one drag it all the way to the top and now we see that we just dragged our slide to the very first page very first slide of the slideshow that was direction number two on PPT 27 I would have saved my document and I find in PowerPoint it's except, exceptionally important to save your document as often as possible. We're going to choose Insert on the ribbon. On slide one, that's the key right now, Insert. We're going to insert a picture. This picture is going to be found in our data files. So I'm going to go to my Documents folder and find my data files. We're in PowerPoint. We're in PowerPoint. module one we'll see that the slide we're looking for the background we're looking for is the autumn leaves and we'll choose insert this applies to our autumn leaves picture 
over all of our other text and we're going to go ahead and deal with that in a little bit. Let's click on number two, slide two. We'll choose insert. We're going to insert another picture. This picture is from the same location. We're looking for the owl picture. We'll choose insert. We're going to click on slide three. This is the comparison. This one's a little different. Instead of using insert up here, we're going to use insert in these content areas for the comparison slide. We're going to use the same logo, which is a picture logo. This logo is going to be the grasshopper picture, which is insert. You'll see that it'll actually fill our frame instead of making it a full size image it'll actually resize the picture to fit the frame or resize the frame to fit the picture then we'll go and click on the insert another picture this picture is going to be the dragonfly picture we'll choose insert it'll resize that the same way but again it's gonna fit it to the frame slide 4 we're gonna insert another picture and we'll insert the firefly to this page here once again we're gonna save our document just in case we lose our work on slide one we're going to make sure we click the picture we click the picture we're gonna see the size handles the lower right hand corner of the size handle we're going to click the picture until it's resized approximately with what figure 1-51 on PPT31 looks like. So I'm going to click and drag it up until I get my document to be about this size. You'll notice the red snap line appears. That's actually a pretty good indication of when we've reached about the right spot. All right, so if you bring that there, we'll notice that it's it showed up. The book has it a little bit larger than that, so I'm going to go, or rather a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to go and move mine a little bit further forward, so a little bit back here. And, you know, this should take care of it. You don't have to be super exact, but I'm sure going to try. All right. So that's the picture we're looking for. I'm going to click on slide two. On slide two, I'm going to click on the picture of the owl. I'm going to resize my picture so that it is sized non-proportionally. So I'm going to click and drag up until I line up with the bottom edge or the top edge of the green. So I just non-proportionally resized my picture. Slide 3 doesn't need any resizing because they're appropriately sized for the frames. Slide 4, the picture of our firefly, we're going to click on the firefly. And this time, we're going to drag our firefly from the upper left or lower left corner. We're going to drag it up till I get somewhere around here. Not going to be exact. But again, we'll try. Let's start moving our picture. So slide four is still selected. Our picture is still selected. We're going to move our picture. We're going to click and drag it down until we see the snap line appears. We're looking for the snap line that is under the text Twilight Fireflies. And then we're going to move it to the left until we get that other one. We're going to see the snap lines here that are red dotted lines. So we know we position this approximately where the book is asking for right here. Now I will note that my picture is still a little bit too big so I'll probably resize mine a little bit further so that way it's not coming off the screen and then I'll make sure those snap lines appear again. That way we know it's resized as appropriately as possible. We're gonna go to slide two. Slide two I'm gonna click on the picture of the owl the owl I'm going to move, it's going to be moved down and to the right. Once again, you're going to move it 
so that it is lined up approximately where the book is suggesting. You're not going to be super exact, but you can sure try again. And just cover it so it looks pretty good. All right, so that's where that one's going to go. I'm going to click on slide one. Slide one is the picture of the autumn leaves. The autumn leaf picture is going to be dragged down and to the right. So we're going to drag it down and to the right until I get my snap lines are going to appear. So there's my one snap line. And then I'll bring it over a little bit further. And my other one is going to appear as well. So these, these lines, just basically move it. You can s resize things appropriately. Okay. So we've done that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to use the rotate picture option. So the picture is still selected. We're going to click on picture tools format. On picture tools format, we're going to see the rotate option. And then we're going to choose to rotate our picture either at a preset amount or we're going to use the click and drag. And this situation is probably easiest to use to click and drag. So I'll wait till my mouse pointer looks like a an arrow. And I'll bring it down a little bit. Maybe I'll bring it back up a little bit because I might have gone too far with it. Something like that. And then I'm going to move my picture so it's approximately shown in here. So it'll be somewhere around here just so that it covers the ribbon or star area that's there so you don't see it. That's pretty close. All right. I'm going to save my document one more time because I need to save it. I'm going to use my slideshow commands to look what a slideshow is going to look like. So I have a couple slideshow commands. I have one down the bottom here that's start a slideshow. This slideshow will show up when we click it. It'll come from the beginning. You click through it. We'll see what our slideshow is going to look like. And then I'll get a big black end screen. Just to show you what slideshow looks like. <laughs> We're going to duplicate a slide, so let's click on slide one. That's still selected. We're going to use the new slide more option, and we'll choose duplicate selected slides. You notice that it shows up automatically as the very next slide. We're going to click and drag it so that it's the very last slide in our presentation. And we're going to change the text on the last slide. So that way, it's as exact as the figure uh, 1-67 on PPT-41 looks like. So we're going to select the text Autumn. I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to go ahead and type Register. And we'll just start typing, even though you can't see it on the screen. Register. For space family programs, what it's going to read instead of it saying Tall, Ho Tall Oaks Nature Center, we're going to change that text to call eight one six dash five 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 dash eight nine two eight today I'm gonna save my work again that way I don't lose it we're gonna add a transition so that way it's not just one slide moving to the next slide so we'll use the transitions tab on the transitions tab we'll see some pre-built transitions that are here we're going to hit the more button. On the more button, we're going to find the wind transition and they're nice. They're nice and easily labeled here. So wind. All right, you'll see what it's going to look like. All right. We're going to change our transition to be 
point two inches or two point two seconds, two point three seconds. So you can click the up arrow a couple of times to so get to three seconds. If we preview this transition now, so the preview button's the upper left side, we'll see that it blows away a lot slower. One thing to call your attention to is the star that appears next to the number 5 right now means there's a transition applied to the slide. I want to apply this slide to all of my, or transition to all of my slides, so I'll click apply to all. Now we'll see the star appears on all of it, and if I click through my presentation, they all have the same transition with the same 3 second delay. Okay, on PPT 45, we're going to do that slideshow again, so we can click the slideshow from beginning button there, or we can go to slideshow and we can choose from beginning on the slideshow tab. So we'll preview our slideshow. It fades in, we click the button, we click again, we click again, and then one more time to the end and then we end our slideshow. We're gonna save this document. We're gonna make sure that we are on the home tab so that we're back to the defaults here. I'll save it again just because I did save the home tab. I'm gonna go to the portal. I'm gonna find on the assignments tab we're going to find PowerPoint Module 1. We're going to upload our file. We'll say Choose File. We'll find this file from our classwork, Tall Oaks, open. We'll upload it to the portal. This is going to take a little bit longer because it is a much bigger file than our Word docs have been. I'll choose insert. I don't need to add a label, I could just choose add. Again, this is a much larger file. And then because I finished my document and I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to be able to click Turn in my PowerPoint. Now my document is complete. I finished my work. I can exit PowerPoint. And then we finished Chapter 1.